I've watched football in cities all across the world, some a little bit closer to home, some a little bit further afield, but I've never seen a football match in the UK's most northern city. So this isn't just your run-of-the-mill match day vlog, far from it. This is part of the SPFL's No Rest for the Wicked campaign, my second video on my YouTube channel for this campaign. The first one was last weekend where we went to Cove Rangers, see them play against Kelty Hearts, and then this is the second of three. And like I say, it's not just a football video, we are going to be checking out the most northern city in the UK to watch a football match, but the SPFL have given me five things to tick off in and around Inverness before the football match. I'll tell you more about that when we get to the hotel, but let's get back on the road. I'm just checking in, please. So what do I have to do in and around Inverness before the match starts tomorrow night? I have to eat at the start of the North Coast 500. It's quite a special location within Inverness. We've got to look for the Loch Ness Monster. I have to interview an Inverness Caledonian Thistle legend, which I can't wait for. I have to go behind the scenes at Cali Thistle on the morning before the match to see how it's all set up. And I need to chat to some fans pre-match. Let's see if we can tick at least one of these off tonight. The game is tomorrow night. So behind me, you can see the Castle Tavern. This is where the North Coast 500 starts, I do believe, and ends. Is there any Scottish explorers out there who could let me know if this is where it starts and ends as well? I'm sure it must be. Um, I'm sure they don't get too many people wanting to do the North Coast 500, the legendary route all around the Highlands this time of year, but they should hopefully have some good Scottish food in there. So let's go in there and check it out. Look at that, even the toilets are in Gaelic or Gaelic. There can't be too many stadiums in the entirety of the UK that have settings like this one. Wow, it is a cold one this morning. My hands feel like they're about to drop off, but yes, we have ticked off one of the five. Last night we ate at the Castle Tavern. I had some haggis, which haggis doesn't always look the nicest, I don't think. It doesn't always look the most appetizing on the eye, but it was really, really delicious. So I would recommend you all going in there. Um, however, yes, we're here at the stadium. We're gonna see what it's like in the build-up to a football match on the morning of a game. I'm sure everyone in there is freezing today, just like I am. Maybe we're gonna find a legend in there as well. Who knows? Let's get in there and find out. What is football like in this city and the surrounding areas? Um, well, it's, it's, it's vibrant, very vibrant, as I say. It's, it's interesting that um, it's 30 years to the week that we've actually got into the Scottish League. And when you see how well that the Inverness and Ross County have done, it's, it's fantastic. You know, in 2015, we had both the Scottish Cup and the League Cup on the sideboard, the two North clubs, which, you know, if you'd gone back 60 years, people would have laughed at you if you'd said mm -hmm. that. So, um, no, it's been great. It's been fantastic for the city. We're obviously desperate to get back out of the Scottish First Division to the top league again. Mm -hmm. We feel we belong in the Premier League, but uh, it's been a, a difficult few seasons for us. And obviously Inverness, Caledonian, Thistle, a lot of people may not know that they were once two, it was once two clubs, Inverness, Thistle and Caledonian. What was that like at the time of the change? Because you were a player for both clubs previously and obviously this club as well. Yeah, it was, yeah, the merger talks in 93, 94, they were, weren't very nice, you know, they got quite heated at times and, you know, I think a lot of things could have been done better, Sam, at the time, but, um, you know, uh, it's been, we've been proved right, the, the final outcome was the correct decision, mm -hmm. but people forget that Cali and Thistle were the two good clubs in their own right, 
Cali in particular were a very well run club off the, for a non-league club very well run mm. Um, I was fortunate to play for both clubs and won trophies and leagues for both clubs. But um, but no, I was glad to see them merged and glad to see the team getting in the Scottish League. And would you say that it's really benefited Inverness, the city and the football club that is here now? Because as you see behind you there, that is the tro- not the Scottish Cup trophy, but the one that you get to keep, yeah, isn't it, yeah. for winning the Scottish Cup? Like this club has won the Scottish Cup. Would the other two teams have won the Scottish Cup if maybe they would have went pro on their own? No, I don't think so. That was the thing. I think the Murray's club had greater potential. That's the way it put it, you know. And we knew that in 93, 94. They had greater potential. And the Cali fans, I say, they argued their case, the Thistle fans too. But, um, you know, the Scottish Cup win in 2015 proved that, you know, that was the icing on the cake, to be honest. You know, yeah. we did great success in the leagues. We'd got into the Scottish Premier League in 2003, 4, um, after only 10 years in existence, which mm-hmm. is incredible. Um, but you're right, the Scottish Cup would would never ever have happened if the clubs had stayed on their own. Um, remembering that when they, both clubs existed in the Highland League, the pinnacle for them was actually to play in the lower rounds of the Scottish Cup. Just to get in the Scottish Cup was the, yeah. the pinnacle of the well, season, okay. to be honest. You know, So, so to win it, and then to win they it, obviously to, played yeah. in Europe as well, didn't they? Yeah, well, they went to R- Romania in, in, I think it was July that year. They got on the plane and went to Romania to play in Bucharest. It's just... It was really a dream come true, you know. If somebody had said that to me and my family's been fo- in, steeped in football in Inverness, I would have burst out laughing 40 years ago, you know. So yeah. it's uh, it's great to see. And as I say, I, I, there'll be times like that again, you know, and I say that to our fans that we've had a great 30 years and I think there's, there's certainly great things to come again. So these are your heroes growing up. This was, this is this Caled? Oh, this is Thistle, this is right? Okay. Team. I, was, I lived quite close to where Thistle are, King, well, where your hotel is. So who's one of the best players in so this? He was my hero there. Who was the Titchy Black? Um, I think the game will be tight tonight. It's um, you know, Dunny United have they, they they looked as if they were going to run away with the league at one stage, but they're actually behind Ray Throvers at the top of the table at the moment. So massive game for them tonight. Um, the big game for us. We'd had a bit of a. Slippery, slippery run there. Big dank game. Um, three or four games we didn't play very well, but great result last week um, down at Ayr mm-hmm. that we badly needed. So the boys should go into tonight's game full of confidence. And uh, as you see, the pitch is actually in good condition now. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and the sun's just poking through as well, which is nice. And you can see some of the lads out there look taking yeah. the the frost covers off. Um, obviously, there's a lot of work that goes into these games. Um, from people behind the scenes that a lot of people probably don't know about from yeah. further afield. Why should people who are local come and watch football here at the stadium? Yeah, one of the reasons is because of the work the club puts into it. You know, it's been frustrating at times that we know that the fans we have have really been loyal, tremendous. You know, it's, they've been superb. But we, we find it difficult to increase that numbers over the years. You know, even after the Scottish Cup one, it's been a challenge. So it would really be nice to to get more people down, getting because um, it's a great night. I, you know, it's. It's um, come down here, especially I always like Friday night football. I think it's got that extra edge Friday night football that people mm. enjoy. And I think we will see a, a, a good crowd tonight. And um, I'm sure everyone will want me to ask you, obviously your family's very much involved with yeah. football in Inverness. Your dad played for Inverness, Inverness yeah. Thistle. Thistle yeah. Your brother played for Thistle, Thistle yeah. as well. You played obviously for the both clubs and yeah. Cali Thistle. And obviously your son Ryan, yeah, yeah. who's done very well for himself. Uh, how's he getting on currently uh, down south? Yeah, he's loving it. Sam, he just loves it. He's, he made the move. I was a wee bit um, unsure when he made the move from Celtic. He had a great life at Celtic, doing very well there. But um, he's been proved 100% right. Mm-hmm. They got promoted in the first year at Bournemouth. Great club. Really well-run club. Um, they're doing so well. He loves the new manager, the Spanish um, new manager. Ryan gets on very well. And he's started every game. Um, they've been in a tremendous run, playing really good stuff that suits Ryan. And he's probably playing some of the best football of his career at the moment. And he had a huge uh, part, obviously, in the qualification for the last Euros. Yeah, um, yeah. Oh, great. So how proud are you at that moment? Oh, incredible. You know, to think, um, you know, I don't want to tempt fate here because it will be a difficult squad to get into, but I know Ryan's obviously got a chance and he's done really well for Steve Clark. He gets on well with Steve as well. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got a lot of respect for Steve Clark and what Steve's done for the, the national team. But Ryan loves playing for the Scotland team. He always have done from, from his debut in 2017. So... You know, it'd be lovely to think that he might play in two consecutive Euros would be a a dream come true. Wow, 
Well, did you see all of the staff out there, the ground staff getting the pitch ready for later, pulling off the covers? Wow, look at this, what a sunny day. It is an Inverness, it is freezing cold. What does the car say? Zero degrees. So there you go, literally freezing um, for tonight's game. But yeah, game should be on, the frost covers are coming off. Shout out to all the staff who are getting the pitch ready for later. That's kind of some of the stuff that you don't see. I go to a lot of stadiums, obviously, around the country, but I mean, if you're coming to the game at like 7.45 later, you don't know that people have been here from 10 o'clock in the morning um, getting everything ready. And also, here we go, ready? Two more things to tick off. There we go, we've seen the stadium uh, prior to the game, seen what goes on, and we've also spoken to Inverness Caledonian Thistle legend Charlie Christie, who's also the dad of Ryan Christie, currently at Bournemouth, who's obviously at Celtic, and. Scotland national team too so what a fantastic start to today still got a couple of things to do before the game later on here is where it all began look at that in this hotel in April 1933 Mrs Mackay Manageress reported seeing a whale-like fish or a water beast in the loch. Her sighting sparked the birth of a monster media frenzy and created a global legend. It all began here. If my memory serves me correctly, this is the largest body of water in the UK. I'm pretty sure that's a fact that I said on my Loch Ness FC video. And uh, wow, look what I've just seen here. Some Eintracht Frankfurt fans have been here at Loch Ness. Do you see the monster anywhere? I know we've sort of seen the monster just in town there, but yeah, here we go, Loch Ness. 25 minute drive from Inverness, Britain's most Northern city. This is some, some of the stuff that you can see if you wanna come and watch football here and check out a little bit of the landscape as well. Look at this, beautiful. Freezing cold, bit windy, but beautiful. So here we are back at the home of Inverness, Cali Thistle, and we're in the press box. Let me show you the press box quickly. Um, we have our bibs there. Maybe I'll take one for later and go pitch side. We have tea and coffee, and we've got a heater on down here, which is so needed today, let me tell you. Um, but look, I've been given a coffee on the way in by the lovely ladies on reception and in the club shop. Big Dunks Highland Army, look at that. I've not even mentioned him yet. Yeah, Duncan Ferguson, obviously, um, is the manager here at Inverness Cali Thistle. And they've just signed Jamie Carragher's son, James Carragher, on loan from Wigan. So some huge names um, associated with Inverness Caledonian Thistle this season. And here is the league table. It is second, Dundee United, who are the away side tonight. And as you can see there, Cali Thistle are lower mid-table. But the most interesting fact that I found out about today, looking at the two teams, is that Dundee United have only conceded two away goals all season. It's the new year, and they've only conceded two away goals all season in the league. That's some record. Tony, you've uh, conceded two goals away from home in the league all season, Dundee United. No, just don't know that. Yeah, wh why do you think you've defended so well away from home? Uh, I don't know, I think we've defended well as a whole, but obviously we've just conceded a couple at home yeah, cool. recently to make it nine. I think before that we've maybe only been at four at home okay, before yeah. last weekend, so sometimes you can be in the wrong end of the scoreline, but hopefully we continue that and only concede two by the end of play today. And uh, you scored a hat-trick on your 30th birthday yeah. recently. How are you feeling going into the, obviously the colder months of the year? Yeah, I, I like the winter, I kind of like the feel of it. Obviously a lot of people don't, but I think there's a good wee vibe when it's cold and there's a bit of frost in the air yeah, and yeah. the lights are on and kind of Scottish winter, I kind of enjoy that. Yeah, you thrive in the cold. Yeah, I like more. it. I, I think it's, that's what Scotland's all about. And I don't think we're used to the, of course. the sunny nights yeah, much, absolutely. obviously, in the summer, but we don't have a summer lead, unfortunately. And um, I've been on a bit of a mission recently to take off that. all the 42 SPFL clubs. Is that your first time here? This is my first time oh, here. Then. What's your, sort of, some of your favourite grounds to play in? Some of the more obscure ones, the smaller uh, ones. I like, 
you can cut this because it might take a bit to think. One eternity later. I actually quite like here in Valness. I think it's quite open but still a good sized stadium. Yep. Probably would be one of mine, obviously it's fresh in the memory. Lower leagues, obviously I was born behind Albion over, so that's okay, one. Coke Bridge, yeah, nice. Airdrie, that's where I played. And then higher up in the league. I quite like Partick Thistle. Yeah. That's an awesome old like, classic based, round, yeah. yeah. I liked Hearts before it was done up, but obviously still it's good. Yeah, there's a lot of good nice. Scottish ground, there a lot of it, good yeah, views yeah. to it. But no, this is one of the good ones, as you can see. You got the motorway behind, but everything else is kind of... This is my first ever start for Celtic as well up here, so it's kind of good memories. Okay, nice. okay, yeah, oh, perfect, mate. Well, all the best. Right. Cali Thistle against Dundee United tonight. What do you think going into the game? Uh, I think I like the element of Duncan Ferguson having that connection with, with Dundee United. Yep. And, uh, both of course, because he played for United, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, United, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's him and Jim Goodwin both have, um, as players, they're pretty combative players, so I'm expecting the Fireworks uh, between the managers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm hoping, I think it's going to be tight, but I'm hoping 2 1 Cali. 2 1 Cali, and what do you think, mate? Uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I'm new to kind of Scottish football, so yeah. just looking forward to the game, but I'll give it a 1 1 draw. Cali Thistle supporters? Yeah. Who's been the player of the season so far then? Uh, Billy McCoy's dad. Billy McCoy? That's your dad? Oh, mate, you've got a famous dad around here, so you must be happy watching him play then. Yeah, hopefully they win tonight. What's the score going to be today? 3 1 Cali. 3 1. 1. Yeah. And who's your favourite Cali player? And we have kicked off in probably the coldest stadium I think I've ever been to. Got the United fans over there. What a commitment from them to come. How many would you say? Three or four hundred, five hundred maybe away fans? Considering it's right after Christmas, it's like, feels like minus 50 in here. And it's obviously a trek on a Friday night. Jim Goodwin, Duncan Ferguson, two hard men in their playing days up against each other today as managers. I've ticked everything off, so I'm gonna treat myself to a pie. I have a steak pie and a bottle. Here's all the media seating outside. Look at all the media guys. They're all in the warm. I'm keeping it real for you guys, don't you worry. We're approaching half time here and it hasn't been a classic by any stretch of the imagination. I would say the highlight has been the bottle probably so far. Um, but yeah, nil nil. Most chances I'd say are coming to Cali Thistle who've got a free kick at the end of the half here. Um, but just think about it, I've been to games at all Premiership stadiums. I've been to every stadium but one in League One and every stadium but two in League Two. But this actually completes the championship for me today. So. Not only have I now completed the Premiership in Scotland, I've now completed the Championship. I've just got League 1 and League 2 to go now, so yeah, it shouldn't be long. We've only got three left to visit, obviously, after today. Um, Cali Thistle with the free kick right before half-time here. And an offside, and that should bring up half-time. Unless anything else happens, I shall see you in the second half. Number 30 there, just hobbling slightly. He's took a knock just there, but James Carragher has had a good game on his Inverness debut today. Game's getting on now, and it's still 0-0, and it's been very entertaining watching Duncan Ferguson. But yeah, he's been very animated today, Duncan Ferguson. Every time Cali Fischl do give it away cheaply, he's not happy about it. It's a late goal for Tony Watt, and maybe a bit of aggro between the players. Yeah, we're celebrating in front of one of the defenders and look at the away end. We've actually seen the goal. Look what it means to them away fans. Wow, a Friday night coming all this way. They've waited a long time for that moment.
I had given up all hope at this point. I thought this is destined to be nil-nil. There hadn't been many clear-cut chances, especially in the second half. There have been a few more in the first half. More for Cali Fissel, to be honest, but yeah, a bit of a breakaway. Dribbles across to the back post, and then Tony Watts just there to tap it in, and it's 1-0 to the away side, probably with three or four minutes to go. right now. Dunking at the Lord of Players, look at this. We'll have to watch the highlights back of this one. Fans behind the goal aren't happy. Pig dunks fuming. Jim, it was uh, not the greatest game, I wouldn't say, today, but you must be delighted with the three points. Yeah, listen, uh, it wasn't a great spectacle at all. You know, I think it was um, a really disappointing game that lacked any real quality. Um, you know, I think if the game had finished 0-0, I don't think there could have been any complaints from anybody. But delighted with the resilience and the, the character that the lads showed um, to keep going right till the last minute and, um, you know, get the all-important goal. Please for Tony. Another assist for Glenn Middleton, and uh, you know, really important that we got back to a clean sheet tonight as well. And it's been quite the title race so far this season between yourselves and Wraith Rovers. Has have you been keeping much focus on what they've been doing? Is that sort of pushing you, or are you just focusing on yourselves? No, we we tend not to talk a great deal about Wraith Rovers, to be honest. I mean, they're having a great season, of course. You know, we keep an eye on the league table, and uh, we know how well they're doing. But it's not something that we we talk about a great deal, to be honest. We just try and focus on ourselves try and improve daily on the training ground um, and you know try and pick up good results like this and you know tonight we're sitting top of the table on goal difference um, yeah. albeit maybe only for a few hours because uh, I would expect Wraith Rovers to go and win their game tomorrow I think they don't have uh, too much for Queen's Park but you never know. That's three points on a Friday night so you can go and enjoy your weekend. Absolutely. <laughs> Amazing Jim, thanks. Mate. So there we go I'm glad that we spoke to Jim Goodwin at the end of the game and not Duncan Ferguson. I know there was a little bit of a contentious penalty there at the end um, but even when the games aren't massively entertaining in the since championship you still get some great drama and the late goal from Tony Watt, the penalty drama. Um, and even as the game was going on, there was a lot of individual battles on the pitch. But um, yeah, just watching Duncan Ferguson on the touchline, very animated character um, when a decision doesn't go their way or when the players lose the ball or whatever. So yeah, even though it wasn't the greatest of games for the majority of the game, there were still some really good moments to enjoy in there, particularly obviously for the Dundee United fans, the late goal and the late winner, which puts them top for tonight. And um, yeah, if Rafe win tomorrow, then obviously they'll go back to the top. Please do remember to check out the SPFL YouTube channel. I will link it down in the description box below. They post highlights from Premiership games and lower league games as well. And it's been great to work with them on the No Rest for the Wicked campaign. It's getting on for 11 o'clock at night. I'm just back at the hotel. I've got a lot of editing to do to get this video up for tomorrow. And then I've got to leave here early in the morning to go to East Fife. So make sure you subscribe to this channel so you don't miss the East Fife video. And yeah, go and subscribe to the SPFL channel too. Thank you so much and goodbye.